This morning I want to talk about something um, or share something with you that uh, is quite a deep subject so you need to kind of be awake. Sorry, I know it's not easy in this heat but we're going to go quite deep quite quickly. So you know, unwrap your sweets, suck on that, drink something but if you just stay with me for the next hour or two that would be great <laughs> and then um, hopefully you'll go away blessed. So as you get older, as, we, as one gets older, you start thinking about your own mortality, don't you? I was thinking, you know, this is going to be depressing. <laughs> you know, you start thinking about, you know, now I'm 30, I, I think about it more than when I was 20, John, this, you find that? Yeah, so now we're in our 30s, we, we, you find yourself thinking about where, what? Where, where, where am I going? What does life mean? What am I going to accomplish? What am I going to achieve? You know, and as you, as you get older, seriously though, would you begin to think that? And, and way back when, in lockdown, um, when you couldn't go out very far, Helen and I would take a walk every day. We still do take a walk every day, but we took a walk out of our house and it took us, we were living in Cheriton, and it took us up to St. Martin's Church. And we would, uh, it's a bit morbid, but we would we'd walk around the church and we'd come back. And after a while, because we did that you know, like three times a day, we started reading the headstones, you know, just something to do, right? Interesting, come on, everyone's done it, you know. And, um, and you see, then some of those, some of the headstones in that churchyard go back to like 1700 and something. I mean, that's pretty old, right? But anyway, um, I heard a message about, about walking through a cemetery once, and this person was saying that really, when you look at the dates on a headstone, you know, you only have the little bit in between those two dates, you know, when you were born and when you passed away, to make a difference, just that little gap, that little dash. And there's a, a poem, I didn't write this poem, I'm, you know, limericks I can do, but poems I can't. Um, this is by a, a poet called Linda Ellis. I'm just going to read this to you and then explain why I'm talking about this. It says, I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that they spent alive on earth. And now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. Good, eh? <laughs> but I don't want to talk about that. Um, I, I don't want to talk about that little dash. I want to go a little bit deeper than that. Um, I want to ask, why? Why? Why does it matter? Why does it matter how we live our lives? You know, we say, yeah, we've only got that little dash in which to, to do good, but why does it matter if we do good or not? What, what's the purpose? What is the reason? So it's quite a subject to cover in 30 minutes. You know, what is the reason for life? What is the reason that we do what we do? Why do we live like we live? There we go, the reason. I was emailing or texting Janet, and she said, what's the title of the message? And I said, oh, I don't know. And said, uh, let's call it this. No, let's call it this. No. She said, which one is it? You know, <laughs> let's go with the reason. So what is the reason for life? Okay, wow, that's a big subject to tackle, isn't it? So hopefully you're going to get it. So firstly, you know, why is it important that we have a reason? Why do we need a reason? Why not, why bother with a reason anyway? Why not just sort of cruise on through life? Why do we need a reason? Well, if I was to say to you uh, after the service, if I was to say to you, you know, are you, know, are you free tomorrow at lunchtime? Can you meet me for a coffee tomorrow at lunchtime? Um, and we'll meet in town. And you might say, yeah, why? Yeah? yeah well, we don't usually have coffee. Why? Why do you want to meet? You know, because I'm busy, I've got work, I've got kids, I've got, you know, there's transport issues. Yeah, I can meet you, but I need a reason. I need you to tell me why. And that's fair enough. It's a, it's a valid question. Why do you want to meet for a coffee? So we, we ask that question, um, and I'd say, you know, I'd say, yeah, I'm, I'd give you a reason. But, you know, we do so many other things without a reason. You know, what is our purpose? Why do we go to work? Why do we get married? Why do we have kids? Why do we do this? Why do we do that? Why do we do any of it? So we'll, we want a reason to meet for a coffee, but we haven't got a reason for our own existence. Can you see the importance, <coughs> excuse me, the importance of having a reason? You know, we, we place great value on our time, on segments of our time, 
on, on small parts of our day. Give me a reason for the meeting. We even do it at work, don't we? Oh, we've got a meeting. Oh, what's the reason for the meeting? Do I need to be there? I'm very busy. I've got a full schedule. So do I need to attend that? You know, you've got all these invites coming into your inbox, don't you? You want a reason for these little segments of life. But really, we should have a reason for the whole thing, for the whole of life. Otherwise, what's it all about? What, wh why, why bother? Why live? You know, we have, we have the Bible that tells us about doing good, but why do good? Why? You know, I was, like I think I said this before, I'm always, I was always a child that would annoy my parents with asking why. Why? You know, why? Why? And in the end, it would always come down to that classic parent answer, because I said so. <laughs> you know, but why? Why? And that's what I want to look at just for a few minutes today. Why? Why, why do we need to live right? Why, what is our reason? What is our reason for living? What is behind it? What is the meaning to life? And uh, I was talking to Ed on the sound desk there, and he said, well, obvious, the, the reason, the meaning of life is obviously 42. <laughs> and those of you who've watched Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy will know what he's talking about. You know, they spent years and years, this, this computer, feeding all this information into it for years and years. And it went through a calculation after calculation. It took hundreds and hundreds of years. And there, as the computer printed out the ultimate meaning of life, and they're waiting there, it goes, G -g 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 -g, 42 is the answer. That's the answer to the meaning of life. So you need to watch the series or watch the film or something. But the answer is not 42. And that if, even if it was, that doesn't help us, does it? It doesn't help us. So what is the reason for life? Well, I want to um, read to you from the words of Tolstoy. Just to be clear, I don't spend a lot of time reading Tolstoy. Um, you do need a lot of time to read Tolstoy. He, doesn't, he can't say anything just in a few words. He has to say it in a whole book. But Tolstoy, towards the end of his life, went through a dilemma, as many of the great thinkers did, or do, and they end up asking this question. What is the reason for all of this? What does it matter? What does it matter about this? What does it matter about that? Why am I here? Why was I born? Where do I fit within the whole cosmos? What, why am I here? You know, and like all the great thinkers who went before him, and those who come after him, he asked that question. He went through a real dilemma. I mean, he had wealth, he had possessions, he had everything, but he got to the point of such depression over this that no one could help him. And this, this is what he said. It's always going to be encouraging this morning. This is what he said. He said, my question was the simplest of questions, lying in the soul of every man from the foolish child to the wisest elder. <clears throat> it was a question without an answer to which one cannot live. As I had found by my experience, it was what will come of what, am I, what I am doing today or shall do tomorrow? What will come of my whole life? Differently expressed, the question is this. Why should I live? Why wish for anything or do anything? I can also, it can also be expressed thus. Is there any meaning in my life that the inevitable death awaiting me does not destroy? Depressing, but he's got a good point, hasn't he? You know, if we just live to die, what's the point? What is the point? Now, no matter how much good I do, when I die and turn to dust, so what? Makes no difference to me. Can you see what he's saying? And you say, well, yeah, well, well, Tolstoy, he was remembered, right? The fact that you've got his, his, his quote there. Yeah, but in, you know, in, the, in the time scale of humanity, eventually Tolstoy will be forgotten. We are just uh, a heartbeat in the timeline of, the, of eternity, aren't we? And eventually all of these quotes, all of these books, all of these things, films, quotes, famous people, philosophers, they will all be forgotten. And that's what he's saying. What's the point? I'm going to be forgotten. I'll make, my life will make no difference. So to summarise, he's saying this. If I'm going to die, and if this life is all there is, then life means nothing. No matter what I do in life, it doesn't make any difference. I will be forgotten. Man, that's depressing. Right? But, you know... Solomon said something similar, or actually, because Solomon came first, so Tolstoy said something similar to Solomon. But listen to what Solomon said. This is in the Bible, all right? Just if I get a better Bible verse in there. In Ecclesiastes 1, he says this. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labours at which they toil under the sun? Generations come and go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and it hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams float into the sea, yet the sea is never full. 
To the place the streams come from, they, run a, they return again. All things are wearisome. More than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, and the ear its filling of hearing. What has been will be again, and what has been done will be done again, and there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new? It was here already, long ago. It was here before our time, and no one remembers the former generations, and even those yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow them. Very similar, right, to what Tolstoy said. People come and people go. Lives are born and people die. Life goes on. The sun keeps, so the earth keeps going around the sun. Things just keep happening day after day after day after day. And it all just means nothing. Is there any reason? Solomon said, meaningless, meaningless. Life is meaningless. So we obviously know that life isn't meaningless, meaningless, but Solomon was searching for an answer. Tolstoy was searching. If only they'd been here today. <laughs> just kidding. So they're searching for this answer. They're searching for a reason. And whether you're there or not, one day you will ask that question. Whether you're a believer or not, what is the reason for my life? It's a good question to ask. What does it matter how I live my life? What does it matter how I raise my kids? What does it matter how they live their lives? What does it matter? And that's what Solomon was saying. That's what Tolstoy was saying. So, there's different modern theories or principles or reasons that the secular world gives for the reason of life. There's lots of them, and you can Google and find hundreds of different theories and philosophies. I'm going to read one to you, and this is the most common one, the most popular one. Like I said, other ones are available, so you can go and look at those. But this is, this is, excuse me, this is, this is the reason that if you ask a secular thinker, they will probably give you this. It says, I'm living to be free. I'm living to be free. I'm living to follow my heart. I'm living for what I want to do, and then I want to do it with all of my might. That's a common reason for, for people doing what they do. I'm living to be free. I just want to be free. I want to do, there's a song coming on, I can feel the song coming on. So I want to do whatever I want to do any old time. You know that song? Anyway, okay, right. So I, I'm living for freedom. I'm living to do what I want to do. But the problem is, is that, that statement, that philosophy, is untenable. It, it can't be defended. It doesn't make any sense. You think, well, yeah, it does. I'm living to be free. I'm living to do whatever I want to do. I'm living to, to live out my dreams. I'm living to just want to do what I want to do. That's, that's, why, that's why I'm living. You think that does make sense, but it doesn't make sense. When you examine that, that way of thinking, the ideology, it doesn't make sense. Now, there's a, you know, when you're preparing these messages, you end up reading stuff that you'd never normally read or I do, and there's a, a philosopher, a French philosopher, called Albert Camus. Albert Camus. So I encourage you not to read him. He's very boring. Um, but he does make some very good points. But this, this chap, Albert, he was, um, he was a, an atheist and a philosopher. He was also a journalist and a writer. But even he could see that living for freedom didn't make any sense at all that it was untenable, that it was unreasonable. I'm going to read you a quote by him. He says this, We modern people believe in absolute freedom. Many of us don't believe in God at all. Many of us don't believe in a God that you can know, and therefore we believe in no God. Or no God that you can really know because we believe in freedom. If there was a God, and if there was a God we could know who told us how we had to live and who gave us the rules and the regulations, well, then we wouldn't be free. But because we believe in freedom, and because we don't believe in the traditional views of God, we are free, but we're free like a guy called Sisyphus. Now, so what he's saying is, is, is that um, the modern secular world is living for freedom, right? Re the reason we're living for freedom is because we don't believe in God. So, the, so if there was a God who told us what to do, then we wouldn't be free. So we're living for freedom. If there was a God who told us what to do, we wouldn't be free. And he says, but that's like Sisyphus. Now, Sisyphus is, a, is from Greek mythology. And this guy, Sisyphus, <coughs> I don't know too much about Greek mythology, but this is the basic gist of the story, is that Sisyphus betrayed the gods. So they told him secrets. They told him godly secrets, whatever they are, I don't know. And he betrayed them by, by telling those secrets to mortal men. All right, 
So Zeus got ticked off about that, and his punishment to Sisyphus was is that every day you need to get this great big boulder, this great big rock, and you need to roll it up a hill. You roll it right to the top of the hill, and just as you're about to get it over the hill, he flicks it back down again, and the next day Sisyphus has to push the same rock up the same hill. Do you ever feel like that? <laughs> so yeah, I think I work with Sisyphus. <laughs> so, in other words, life is meaningless. The only meaning it has is to push the rock up the hill. It hasn't got any benefit, has no meaning to it, has nothing. So, so what Albert Camus was saying is that, is that life becomes purposeless without God. So, if there's no, so no matter how much freedom you have, if there is no God, which is the reason that you have freedom, then there is no purpose. Let me say that again. So we want, we want complete freedom. We want freedom to do whatever we want. The only way we can have complete freedom is if there is no God. right? Because if there was a God, he would tell us what to do. But if there is no God, then there is no reason. There is no purpose. Can you see that? So freedom, yes, you may be free, but you will never have a reason. You will never have a purpose. I think oh, that doesn't make sense. You go away and read it, okay? It's, it's, it does make sense. The more you think about it, if we want freedom, then we can't have complete freedom and God. Because with God, there is direction, there is counsel, there is wisdom, there is guidance. But if we want complete freedom, then we can't have God. But if we don't have a God, then there is no reason. There is no purpose. So, so he was saying, look, th that way of thinking doesn't work. All right, so just hold that in your in your thoughts for a minute, and let me just jump across to another point, and I'll pull these things together. So a little while ago, and I was going to show this, but it actually was a, a lot longer ago than I thought it was, because it's in, almost in sepia, there's this um, video clip an ad, of an advert, and you may remember this, I don't know what it was advertising, but it was, it's often the way with adverts, isn't it? You don't, you know, you think, you know, have you seen that advert with this guy or this dog juggling baseballs or something? And you think, yeah, I have, but you can't remember what it was for. But this advert, is a, it begins with this, this, this lady and she's, she's bought her elderly father an iPad. And uh, she phones him up and she says, Dad, are you enjoying the iPad? He's, oh yeah, it's wonderful, it's a great gift, thank you so much. And then she goes around to his house for dinner and he's in the kitchen and he's got his iPad on the, on the work <laughs> surface and they're, they're chopping up onions and stuff. And, and, um, and you, you think that he's, he's reading a recipe off the iPad. But what he's actually doing is using it as a chopping board. So he, he, he's chopping, you know, there's onions on it, and then he rinses it under the tap and he puts it in the dishwasher. <laughs> so you might remember that advert, I don't know if you do or not, but anyway. But the point is, is that that guy did not know the purpose of the iPad, right? He didn't understand what its purpose was. And that illustrates a point that at the time of, um, well, prior to the time of, of Christ coming, hundreds of years prior to that, is that the Greek philosophers had this theory, had this reasoning. And they, they said that, or they were fascinated by two words, which is telos and logos. Right? Telos and logos. You might, you might recognise that second one, logos, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But they believed if you, if you use something and you don't honour its logos or its purpose, then it will never fulfil its potential. So the, the logos refers to the reason or the potential for, being, for, for having something. Okay? So with the iPad, and that's not an iPad, it's my Bible, but if you don't honour the logos of the iPad, yes, you can use it as a chopping board, and it might work really well, right? But you're never going to see the full potential, potential, potential? Potential of the iPad unless you use it for its designed purpose, yeah? Or you use it for its designed logos. That was how they used that word. Use it for its designed logos, the reason the reason for its being. And so their theory was, well, if you can find the reason, the logos of something, then you can find its purpose, and therefore you can see its full potential released. Yeah? That was their thinking. And then as they followed that course of thinking, they thought, well, what if we could find our logos? What if we could find our reason? If we could find our reason, then we would fulfill our potential. Can you see that? If we could find our reason, our logos for being, just like the iPad, then we would step into this potential. 
if we could find the reason that we were made, the reason that we were designed, the reason that we were placed on the earth, which is what I was just talking about, what is the reason, what's the point of that date, that little dash between those two dates on the headstone, if we could find the reason for that dash, well then we fulfill potential, then we would be all we were supposed to be. Then we could live in this fulfillment and be happy and fulfilled and, and do what we were born to do. The problem is, they couldn't find it. And for hundreds of years, they discussed theories and ideas and ideologies and they would come together in the temples and they would discuss, well, maybe this is the Logos or maybe this is the Logos or maybe we need to think about this or maybe it's about love or self-fulfillment or all of these different things. They went through all these, these different theories, but they could never agree. They could never agree in a Logos, in a reason that made sense. And by the time we see Christ come into, into, the, into the story, they had given up hope and they had said, well, maybe there is no Logos. Maybe there is no reason. Maybe there isn't a reason. Okay, enter John, right? And John writes a passage of scripture that when you look at it in the, in the context of what I've just told you, is incredible. It's incredible anyway, but we look at it within that context of the reason for being. So he he rocks up, John rocks up to all these Greek philosophers and he drops this huge bomb, this huge kind of like <laughs> bomb. Remember, they've been discussing this for hundreds of years. What is the reason for life? And I'm going to tell you what it is next Sunday. So if we just want to just stand up now, we're just going to... Oh, okay, so what is the reason for life? Okay, so... And you'll find what he says in John 1. Okay? I'm going to, I'm going to put... A little bit of Greek in here, not a lot, it's a little bit. So he says, in the beginning was the word, Logos. In the beginning was the word, the Logos. And the word, the Logos, was with God. And the word, the Logos, was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that, was, that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. The word, Logos, became flesh and has made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So what does that mean? Well, John says, you know what? You're wrong. Actually, no, you're right. There is a Logos. And when you know that Logos, you find your purpose. You find your reason. You find your reason and you can fulfill your potential. You were right on that, but you were wrong about it being a philosophy. You are wrong about it being a philosophy because the Logos is a person. The Logos is a person and he is dwelling amongst us. This is what John says. So at the time when they're debating, well, there is no Logos. There is no way of, there is no, no theory that we can agree on that, that will give us purpose for our life, John says, you're wrong, there is a Logos, and he is here right now, that's what he says. He's dwelling amongst us, and the Logos has become flesh. Wow, I mean, to us we might be like, huh? But to these Greek philosophers we'd be like, speechless, completely blown away, because John is telling them, he is giving them the reason for being. I mean, that's huge, right? That's, 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 that's massive. That's, this is not just life transforming for, for individuals. This, this transforms the whole of, of history moving forward. This transforms how we live life. It transforms all the earth when someone says there is a reason. And John drops this huge bomb and says, there is a reason. And let me read this to you. God the designer has built a purpose into our design and into our very DNA. That purpose cannot be found in a principle or an ideal. It cannot be found in an object or a way of living. That purpose, that reason, that potential can only be found in fellowship with Jesus Christ. When we find out what he built us for and we comply and obey with it, we find our reason and we step into our full potential. Wow. When I began to think about this and meditate on this, 
I realised it is true because we can get caught up in things, can't we? We can get distracted, we can get pulled aside by the, the theories and the ideologies of the world. Yeah, it's about freedom. Just, just That's what Christianity is about. It's about freedom. It's about freedom from sin. Yeah, yes, it is about freedom from sin, but it's not about freedom. We read in the Bible that we are slaves to Christ. I wa- that's where I want to be. I want to be enslaved to Christ. What does that mean? It means that I have boundaries. I have reasons. I have principles. I have things that, that give direction to my life. And so that little dash, one day when it comes on my headstone, will mean that I, have, I live that with a reason. And because I lived it with a reason, my life and the echoes of my life will ripple throughout eternity because it will touch other people's lives, because it will make a difference in other people's lives, to other people's children, to other people's situation. That's the reason. We don't just live because good lives, because it's a good idea, because we want people to say nice things about us at a funeral. If we're dead, what does it matter if someone says nice things about us at a funeral? We're not going to be there. Are we? You're not going to hear it. We're not going to hear it. Sorry, we're not going to hear it. Why? Because we're dead. But if we live our lives in Christ, we find the logos, we find the reason. This is my question to you this morning, and I'm almost finished, is have you found that reason? Have you found that reason? Are you still searching for it? Are you still looking for the logos? I want to read that scripture to you once more and just let these, the words of John sink into your spirit. In the beginning was the Word. Actually, in the beginning was the Logos, the reason. And the reason was with God. And the reason was God. He was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, through the reason, all things were made. Without him, without the reason, nothing was made that has been made. And in him, in the reason, was life. And that life was a light of all mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The reason became flesh and has made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Have you seen that? Have you seen that? Do you, can, you, can you connect with what I'm saying this morning? Is that a reason for what you do. And this applies across our lives. You know, you get up on the Monday morning and you go to work. And you, you know, why do you go to work? Well, to earn money. Well, why do you earn money? Well, to pay for the, the rent, to put fuel in the car, to pay for food, to put clothes on the children's back. Yeah, but why? Why? Why do you do that? Because I love them. Why? You just keep asking that question and be annoying. Why? 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 And if there is no reason, then what's the point in it all? And the Logos, the reason of Jesus Christ, filters through all of that. I'm not just talking about becoming a preacher or a pastor or an evangelist or a missionary. Yes, they have their reason. Yes, there is a reason for ministering. There is a reason for going. Yes, we know that. We see that in the Great Commission, don't we? But there has to be a reason for the other things, for the mundane, the day-to-day, the getting up, the doing a good job at work the keeping your, your home clean, providing your kids with clothes, making sure that, that, that justice is done, making sure that people are kept and cared for, making sure that, that, that our children are educated. There has to be a reason. Otherwise, why do it? And Jesus is the reason. And once you find Jesus, you find the purpose. And once you find the purpose, you will fulfill your potential. So what I'm saying is, is that when we love our families, when we love our wives, our husbands, our children, when we work hard, when we fulfill our commitments, when we live with integrity, when we volunteer at church, when we volunteer out in the community, when we do those things, if we're doing it because of the love of God shed abroad in our hearts, then we have a reason. We don't need a philosophy. It's not about us. It's not about freedom. It's not about anything else. It's about the Word, the Logos has become flesh. And He is flesh in us. Amen? He dwells in us. He dwells in us. He lives in us. Can we stand together for a minute? Is that okay? Is that all right? There's something a little bit different here this morning. I know we don't usually do this, and I'm not going to run over, don't worry. But as Janet just plays for a moment, 
if you don't know the reason, if you haven't made Jesus Christ your Lord and Saviour, if you don't know him, then you are going to just meander through life, seeking why I'm here. Yes, and you may live to be 100 or 110, but that dash between the dates of your birth and your death will not mean anything, except to the few people who gather in the room to remember the things that you did. But if you are living for Christ, if he becomes the reason, then your life will echo through eternity. And if that's you this morning, I want you just to pray with me. And uh, maybe we can all pray this together so no one feels too uh, conspicuous, but just pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you made us, that you made me. I am here for a reason. And I recognize that reason is you. Now Jesus, come fill me. Be the Lord of my life. Amen. Amen. Well, I just pray that you take those thoughts away and spend lots of time reading Tolstoy and Camus and all of those great philosophers, but really spend time in his word. Spend time abiding in his word and know that you have a reason. You have a purpose. Maybe you need to hear that this morning. Maybe you're just doing a job that you don't really enjoy. You know, you're, you're, you're doing all that you can do. You're being the best mum, the best dad, the best son you can be, but you don't know why you're doing it. There is purpose in it. There is reason in it. If you are Christ's and Christ is yours, then you've found your reason. And do it with all of your heart. Do it with all of your might. Do it with everything that is within you. Do it as unto the Lord. Amen. And your life will make a difference. It will have made a difference. I mean, Tolstoy, if you read on, at the end of that, he says, I don't know why I'm here and it's not funny. That's what he says. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's not funny. And it's not funny. If you don't know why you are, it's no joke. But once you find that reason, oh, it's good. It's good. Amen. Have a great day. Blessed day. Be sure to be here on Wednesday for Pastor Robert. And uh, have a great week.